here tonight and uh, want to welcome everybody. And uh, if you have a bulletin there from Sunday, if you want to take just a look at it, we do have just a couple announcements and things that we'd like to go over and just remind everybody on. Uh, let's not forget the uh, shoebox ministry is in uh, full full force. And if you would like to take a shoebox on your way out this evening, we encourage you to do so. There's also some information back there on the table with the boxes, uh, a couple of pieces, two different pieces of paper. So please take one of those or both of those with you if you take a box home with you this evening and fill that out. So remember that. Also, uh, want to keep in mind and remember um, all of our prayer requests this evening. Of course, we'll be praying for those here in just a little bit uh, on into the service. But we want to definitely remember uh, the lost tonight. We've got several uh, that we're praying for uh, that we know that are lost. Want to continue to remember our country. Want to remember the leaders of this country when we pray. Want to remember the nursing home residents, and uh, they have had a about a COVID up there, so we're continuing to pray for them, remembering them. And we also want to continue to remember Bible release time. Um, if you are interested and you would like to serve in Bible release time, please let me know. Um, Jenny Boggs will be here next Wednesday night. She's going to be coming. Uh, we'll have regular service like we always do, uh, message, prayer, all that. But at the end, towards the end of the service, uh, Jenny's going to take just a few minutes and share about Bible release time. So if you are not uh, already volunteering and you would like to volunteer, uh, I encourage you, please let me know, and we'll get you signed up. We'll get your background search. We'll get your training done uh, so you can be ready to go for October, the first Friday in October. So we're looking forward to that. We had the opportunity to go and invite the, all the students this past Friday. So uh, be much in prayer. Uh, we were blessed to have over 200 seventh graders, I believe it was, over 200 seventh graders in uh, assembly on Friday morning, and then there was about 199 sixth graders, I believe is what they said. So, uh, so all, every one of them was able to get a permission slip to take home. So be praying that the Lord will work there and that we'll have a good turnout for the middle school. Elementary school is always good, and so be praying for those children there that received a permission slip to take home from the elementary school as well on Friday. All righty, remember, uh, continue to be much in prayer. Let's pray for Benny. Um, Benny's family, uh, member Catherine, as we pray. Uh, we want to continue to remember uh, Brother Ronnie Robbins in our prayers. We want to continue to remember Brother Clarence. We uh, want to remember Christy nicely when we pray as well. Let's pray for her and remember her tonight. Remember Connor, James, and Rihanna's son in prayer. We uh, want to continue to pray for Kayla. She's got surgery coming up here in the next week. So we want to remember her. And then we want to continue to remember Emily Link is in prayer as well. Uh, she's at the nursing home. I uh, want to remember um, all of our schools uh, in this area and across our country. Uh, remember our teachers, remember our students, uh, remember just the faculty, the staff, remember our uh, police officers, our first responders. Uh, just let's just make much in prayer. We've got a lot to pray for, and uh, we need to remember this tonight uh, in prayer, our schools as a whole across this country, not only here at home uh, and locally, uh, as we've seen on the news so much this week, but uh, we also need to remember this uh, as, a, as a country, as a whole tonight in prayer. So we want to remember this. Uh, let's pray, and then I'm going to ask Hunter if he'll come and play and sing and lead us in song tonight. So let's, let's pray this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity you give us to be in your house this evening. Father, we are so blessed, Lord, with the privilege and the opportunity to be here. God, we are so thankful, Father, Lord, as, as the psalmist wrote, and he said, I lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And Lord, you know that, Father, we stand in need. And Father, we need your help. Uh, Lord, we are in a, a time right now, Father, Lord, in, in our own uh, community, Lord, in our own uh, state in our own country, Father, where 
uh, violence and evil, Father, Lord, is, is, Lord, there and it's present. And, Father, we, we pray, Lord, for your, your grace and your mercy. God, we pray for you to intervene. We pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit, Father, to work in the lives, Lord, of all these students. And, and Father, to work in the lives of all the teachers and the faculty, the staff. And, Lord, we just pray, Father, Lord, for your, your hedge of protection, Lord, your wall of prayer, Lord. We pray, God, that, Lord, it be your Holy Spirit, Father, that just would overshadow shadow these schools, Father, Lord, across our country. And Father, we just pray, Lord, for the, the threats that, Lord, are there. We pray that, God, you'll just work there, Lord, according, Father, to your will. We just pray, Lord, that, God, you would intervene. God, we pray, Lord, most of all that, Father, souls would be saved. And, Father, we pray that, that lives, God, would be changed and transformed with the power of the gospel. And, Father, we know that, Lord, that is that, that we have that opportunity, Father, Lord, as, as Christians, as believers, as followers of you, Lord. We have that opportunity as this church, Father, to share the gospel, to spread the gospel, Lord, throughout this community. God, we pray that, Father, Lord, that you would help us to do that, Father, Help us to be obedient to that. We pray for our Bible release time, Father, that's coming up. God, we pray for all those students we were able to invite and extend an invitation to this past Friday. We pray that your Holy Spirit would work in their heart and life. And God, there would be a desire, Father, Lord, that you stir within them, Father, that they would want the opportunity to come to Bible release time and hear the gospel and have the opportunity to be saved and come to know you as their Savior. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just work in the lives, Lord, of our of our church. We pray for our youth. We pray for our children downstairs tonight. God, we pray that you would bless their classes this evening. We pray that you would bless the teachers. God, use them to teach, Father, your word. God, we just pray tonight that, Lord, you would be with us, Lord, as we sing and as we pray. And, Father, Lord, as we study your word this evening, Father, we just pray that you would minister to us, Father, in only the way that you know uh, that what we need this evening, Father. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. the eventide the darkness evening. 
uh, just a, another reminder tonight, and we're going to pray here in just a minute. Uh, but don't forget, this Sunday we'll be we'll be taking up the uh, golden offering, and the golden offering is for Tennessee missions. And if you have one of those little pink envelopes, maybe you've had them in your pew. Uh, maybe you've seen them out in the, the vestibule, the entryway. Uh, but uh, keep in mind and be much in prayer this week. We want to be much in prayer for uh, the golden offering. And just a little bit about it, uh, we know that 100% of this offering goes to missions in Tennessee. Uh, for such ministries as Compassion Ministries, uh, church planning across the state of Tennessee, Baptist centers, education, evangelizing, and etc. Please pray about your gift giving. And the, uh, continue to pray that uh, the Lord would just lead us in the way he'd have us to give. So the goal this year is $2,945. So um, as another uh, little interesting fact about uh, Tennessee, uh, in evangelizing Tennessee, we need to ask others if they know Jesus Christ because about 75% of ten Tennesseans are lost and unchurched. And uh, that's pretty, pretty big numbers, isn't it? Uh, when you think about that, and uh, that we know from uh, other numbers that uh, that over half of the state uh, is is lost and unreached, and they don't know Christ, they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So Tennessee, as uh, we've heard it on these videos, uh, we've said it time and time again. Any way you slice it, Tennessee is a mission field, and uh, we live in the great state of Tennessee. I couldn't think of a better place to live, but you know what? We have people here that's lost, and, and Tennessee's a mission field, and we have a responsibility as, as living here in this community, in this state, uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those around us and that live close to us, that we have life with every day that we have relationships with. So I would encourage you tonight as we go into our time of prayer Pray for those people that you do have a relationship with. Pray for those people that you have contact with on a daily basis that maybe they're lost, maybe they're out of church, maybe they need the Lord Jesus in their life. Whatever that case may be, I encourage you to pray for them. Uh, tonight we are going to pray for in your prayer guide. Uh, on Wednesday is the College Campus Ministries. And uh, the College Campus Ministries throughout the state of Tennessee is a great and wonderful ministry. Uh, I was blessed with the opportunity to go down to Tennessee Tech a couple years ago when, uh, when we were living down in Monterey, and I was pastoring at First Baptist Monterey, had the opportunity to go down and speak at Tennessee Tech and their BCM, and the church there would feed them lunch, and I had that opportunity. It was a great opportunity. Uh, they have several college kids that just come through there, and, you know, we had, I was given probably a wind of about 15 minutes uh, to preach the gospel. And, and to share with them the plan of salvation and to tell them about Jesus Christ. And so these college ministries on the campuses across the state of Tennessee are wonderful opportunities for college age students to come to know Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. So uh, we want to pray for Tennessee colleges. We want to pray for the believers uh, that are attending these college campuses that they may faithfully give their hearts and ways to the Lord throughout their college careers. So we want to remember that tonight. We want to pray for the BCM, the Baptist Collegiate Ministry. Uh, we want to pray for those specialists. We want to pray for those leaders that are part, that they may hold and to grow their love for our Tennessee University students, faculty, and staff. Pray for the next generation of leaders that are being delivered, or I'm sorry, developed through Baptist Collegiate Ministry across Tennessee, that they may sense God's calling and be discipled and mentored toward a life of generous service to his kingdom. So we want to remember this tonight in prayer, and we certainly will pray for that. Does anybody else have another request on your heart this evening that we need to pray for? Yeah, we definitely need to remember Gordon. He's he's going through a pretty tough time there. He's got a lot of family that's had a lot he's had to deal with. So we want to remember him. 
anybody else. Richie's losing his right arm. <laughs> so we want to pray for him for sure. Those at home that's watching know he's really not losing his right arm. But he's, he's going to have Kayla down for a few weeks. So we want to pray, remember Kayla, and we want to remember Richie. Anybody else? Absolutely. Remember our country. Remember the families of those that uh, lives that were lost on that day. Remember them. It's hard to believe it was 23 years ago, isn't it? So definitely want to remember that. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. That's answered prayer. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. That's a good thing to to, to thank Him for. I'm glad to hear those praises tonight. And uh, I know those are answered prayers. So thank the Lord for that. I tell you what, that's a good uh, that's a good note to go to prayer on, ain't it? Let's pray for, for these requests tonight, and uh, we're going to pray for our golden offer. Remember, our collegiate uh, ministries on our campuses throughout our state. And uh, let's remember Gordon Dykes, remember Richie and Kayla, and let's continue to remember our country in prayer. Lord, we thank you, Father, for tonight. And, and once again, God, we come before you. Lord, we are so thankful, uh, Lord, for the prayers that you have answered for us. Lord, thank you for the praises that Lord Ann has shared with us tonight. God, we just thank you, Lord, for the healthy birth of uh, their great-grandson. And, Lord, we thank you, Father, for everything going good there and just the prayers that you answered, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the soul that was saved. Lord, uh, we give you praise for that. And, Lord, we pray, Father, Lord, for the young people that is in this church. God, we know that we have children and we know that we have teenagers and young adults and father we may even have older adults in our church that lord they don't know you as their savior lord they've never put their faith and their trust and their belief in you and they've never uh asked you into their heart and into their life and lord you've never saved them and, and i pray that father your holy spirit would reveal that to them and god i pray for those that lord are getting close that lord you are dealing with and you're drawing and you're convicting and you're working in their life i pray father that lord they would come to that time of salvation in their life that they would call on your name and accept you as their savior we pray tonight father that lord you would be with uh, brother gordon and father we know that this week he is lord had uh, just a uh, the passing away, Lord, of his fam the family, his father, Lord, we thank you, Father, Lord, for, for, for Brother Gordon and God, even for what he means to us. We pray, Father, that you would be with, Lord, his wife and, and Lord, just his family, Lord, uh, in this time. And God, he's had a rough week, but God, we know that you're faithful. And we ask that, Lord, you would just be ever near to Gordon and you'd comfort him and encourage him, strengthen him, Father, with your Holy Spirit and your word. God, we pray that, Lord, you would be ever near, Lord, to uh, Brother Richie, Lord, and be with Kayla as she goes through surgery. God, be with Richie. Help him, Father, with work and the jobs and everything like that, that, God, he's going to have to uh, be taken care of, and, Lord, that he's got to be doing. We just pray that, God, you would help him there. God, we continue to pray for our country, and, Lord, we pray for the family members of those that have lost loved ones, Lord, in 9-11, 23 years ago. We pray that, God, you continue to comfort them. And, Lord, just be ever near to them, Lord, on this day. Father, we pray, Lord, for our Baptist collegiate ministries, Father, throughout the state of Tennessee. Lord, we pray for every BCM across the state, Father, from the west to the east. And, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, that you would work on these college campuses. Father, we pray that you would work in the hearts and lives of the college students. We pray that you would work in the hearts and lives of their leaders. And, God, we pray that you would use them and give them the gospel and the words to preach and teach and to lead these students. And we pray that, Father, these, these students, Father, that, Lord, they would begin to follow you 
Lord, daily in their life. And God, that you would take them and use them mightily for your kingdom, your honor, and your glory. God, we pray for the golden offering that, God, you would take it, bless it, use it for your kingdom. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles this evening, we're going to be studying back in the book of Acts tonight. So if you turn with us, we're going to be in Acts tonight. Uh, Acts, and I believe we're going to be in Acts chapter 5. So if you will, turn you about by in your Bible to Acts chapter 5. And in Acts chapter 5, verse 17 is where we're going to begin reading tonight. Acts chapter 5, verse 17. And uh, do ask this evening that uh, we'll pray and, and open our hearts to receive God's word and that the Lord would just speak to us tonight and would give us exactly what he would have for us in the message this evening. But in Acts chapter 5, and if you will follow along with me, in verse 17, the Bible says this, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, which means also jealousy or resentment, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison or the public jail. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within." Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name, or in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And I'm going to go ahead and read into 29 through 32. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgive of sins. Forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And that's all we'd like to read here this evening. As we begin to study uh, on Acts chapter 5, kind of going back to kind of give us a little uh, update and bring us up to kind of where we are right now in the Scripture, we know, we remember in Acts chapter 5, the first couple of verses, about the first 10 or 11, uh, talked about Ananias and Sapphira. Now, you remember Ananias and Sapphira? Remember the husband and the wife team that uh, they sold the piece of property and they got the money and they come back to the apostles and they said, this is what we sold it for, but they really sold it for another price and they only give a portion of what they made on the land. And we know that they lied to the apostles, they lied to the Holy Spirit. And, and because of that, we know that they were struck down, they were killed. Uh, we know that, uh, that, that the Lord taught a lesson through that. We know that from verse 12 down to about verse 16, 
we find that the apostles, once again, there were many signs, many wonders, many miracles, many healings that were taking place by their hands. And we know that, according to the Scripture, that Jesus gave the apostles this power to be able to cast out demons, to cast out devils, and to heal the sick. We know that. Jesus even gave them this authority and power in the gospel. And we've read that even in the gospel Mark that we've been studying. So we find here now, we get to uh, verse 17, and we know that this is not the first time that we have read where the religious crowd... As the Bible said, if you'll notice, who's the first person it talks about in verse 17? It talks about the high priest, don't it? Now, we know who the high priest is. The high priest is, if you would say, he's the main dude, right? He's the main guy. He's the main religious figure for the Israelite people. So the high priest is there, and the Bible says the high priest, he rose up, and with uh, the high priest rising up, it said not only did the high priest rise up or rose up, but it said, and all they that were with him. Now, who was with him? Well, the Bible tells us that those that were with him were the Sadducees. Now, we know about the Sadducees from the Gospels, right? We know that Jesus was constantly, uh, it seemed like, in confrontation with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, here's the good thing. They're both religious. They're both religious groups. But you know what the funny thing about it is? The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they couldn't get along with one another. They didn't agree. Now, they didn't like what... The, they, the only thing they had in common, the only thing they could agree on, was they didn't like Jesus. And they wanted to get rid of him. So, the, the religious crowd here, the religious leaders, the Sadducees, and the high priest, and probably the other priests that were there at the temple, the religious crowd has got together once again. Now, what we find here is this religious crowd, when they get together, the Bible said that they were filled with indignation, which we know it also means some translations. And when you look up that word, what it means is, is jealousy. Uh, the other translations means they use the word jealousy. Uh, they use resentment. So what we find here is the religious crowd is filled with jealousy and resentment toward the apostles. So we find as the, the it begins to kind of take place, what does it say in verse 18? Well, verse 18 says this, the religious crowd, here's what they did. They laid their hands on the apostles. They took them by force, didn't they? They didn't come and just lay hands on them and say, brother, we're going to pray for you or, or put their arm on their shoulder and say, is there anything that we can do for you? No, they went, the religious crowd goes to those apostles. They laid their hands on them. They took them by force. Force, and what did they do? The Bible said that they took them and they put them in the common prison or what we also know as and refer to as the public jail. That's what they did. So they took them by force, put them in jail, put them in the prison. Now why did they do this? Well, the apostles are going about the business of the Lord Jesus, aren't they? Because the verses before, what were they doing? Man, they were... Many signs, many wonders, many miracles that were taking place through the lives of the apostles. These guys were preaching the gospel. These guys were, were, were touching people and, and God was using these apostles to change lives and transform hearts and lives and, and change people uh, for the good. You see, there were people that were coming to these apostles that were sick or that were in need of healing and, and these men were touching them and these people were being healed. Do you not think that if you were touched by these apostles during that time, your life would be changed? Your life would be transformed? Could you imagine what it must have been like they were hearing the gospel preached and when they were hearing the gospel preached their the the word of god was was beginning to be real in their heart and real in their life and and they were accepting christ they were believing on jesus they were believing on what the apostles were preaching and they were believing the doctrine of the apostles and they were believing that and it was transforming their lives and and you and i that are sitting here tonight that have been saved by god's amazing grace we can relate we understand we know the transforming power the changing power in the gospel and the word of God, don't we? We know that. 
So these people were being changed. Their lives were being changed and turned upside down. And what we find here is the religious crowd, they did not like that once again. So they go, they take these guys, they put them in jail, they put them in the prison. And look what verse number 19 says. This kind of talks, kind of goes back a little bit to what we talked about Sunday morning, right? You see, any time the gospel is being preached, or any time God's work and the move of God, the work of God is taking place, and, and God is working in and through His believers, His followers, His people, His church, when God is really moving and working in and through His people the way He set it up, the way He desires, the way He wants, when, when God's people get to a place in their life where they say, all right, Lord, it's not about me, and, and Lord, I'm going to die to myself today. Lord, help me to deny myself. Help me take up the cross. Lord, help me follow You. Lord, I must... Father, you must increase in my life today. Lord, get me out of the way. And Lord, whatever it is your will is for me and in my life, God, I pray your will would be done in and through me today that someone that's lost and does not know you as their Savior would come to know you today as their Lord and as their Savior. When God's people begin to get out of the way and let God work in and through them, God begins to do great and mighty things. And that's what he was doing through the apostles. And what do we find? When God begins to move and God begins to do great things and mighty things through and through his people, through his believers, through his church, what happens? The enemy is always there to try to resist it, isn't he? The enemy is always there to try to hinder it. And the enemy desires to stop it. But what we learn Sunday is this. The enemy cannot and will not stop the work of God. Now, he can hinder it. And man, he can slow it down, but he can't bring it to a stop. And what we find right here is, is once again, the, the enemy, and you, it's so amazing, but, but he's working through this religious crowd. Isn't that something? These people that think, man, they've got it all together on the outside, and, and they think, man, we're doing what's right, and we're really doing what God wants us to do. No, my friend, this is the religious crowd, but they're not following Jesus. They're not believers in Jesus, the Son of God, but they're a religious crowd, and they're the ones that the enemy is using and working in to try to hinder and slow down the move and the work of God. And so what we find right here is this. What does it say? They laid their hands on them. They put them in prison. But here's the great and mighty thing. Look at verse number 19. Isn't this amazing? They're put in jail. They're put in prison. But aren't you thankful for the deliverance that comes? Man, how many has ever been put? Seem like you've been in a spiritual bondage or a spiritual prison. I've been there. I've been in a spiritual bondage. I've been in a spiritual prison. I felt like I've been bound by sin. And I tell you what, it is glorious and it's a hallelujah shout down when God comes by and delivers you and sets you free and brings you out of that prison. And that's exactly what we find right here. We see this. We find, verse 19 says, But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. Man, who's the only one that can open those prison doors? Them 12 guys sitting in there couldn't do it. Now, the jailer and the, the prison guards, they could do that. But we know they weren't going to. Why? Because if they did, they were dead. They were going to be killed for letting them go. And probably their family would have been too. But what we find right here is this. The angel of the Lord come by and God opened the prison doors that day. And God set his boys, those men, he set them free that night. The Bible said that the Lord brought them out, brought them forth and said, here's what I want you to do. The Lord gave them a command, didn't he? And here's what he said. Go. Now how many times does the Lord tell us he wants us going, doesn't he? go he says go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life or some translation says go speak to the people the words of life so God had told these men he said listen guys 
I'm setting you free. I'm delivering you. I'm bringing you out of this jail and out of this prison that these, uh, the enemy has tried to hinder and slow down my work, the work of God. And God just comes by, opens the prison doors, and he says, all right, guys, I'm setting you free. I'm letting you go. But here's what I want you to go do. I want you to go. I want you to stand. And I want you to speak the word of life. The words of life. What is the words of life? The gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the words of life. And that's what we find right here. He said, go and speak all the words of life. Look what he says in the next verse. Verse 21, how did they respond? Well, here's how the the apostles, this is their response right here in verse 21. And when they heard that, They entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. So you know what? When the Lord spoke to them men down there and said, Go, stand and speak, what did the Bible say? So when they heard the Lord speak, what did they do? They went to the temple and they taught. They were obedient to the command of the Lord. And church, that's the way you and I That's what we need to be doing, right? When the Lord Jesus speaks to your heart, and when he speaks to my heart, and when he says, I want you to go here, and I want you to do this, when the Lord speaks to your heart, and he wants you to go, or he wants you to do this, how should we respond? We should respond in obedience. I'm thinking about what what Calvin shared a couple Wednesday nights ago. He talked about how the Lord had laid this guy on his heart to call and check on. And he said, I didn't know him, had never done that, but God told me to do it. And what did he say? He did it, and it's been a blessing. Not only for Calvin, but for this other guy as well. And when, when God begins to speak to your heart, you may think, man, this is crazy. But when God speaks to your heart, it pays to be obedient, doesn't it? pays to be obedient, pays to follow the Lord. That's exactly what they did. So they go to the temple, and when they heard it, they entered in early in the morning, and they begin to teach. They begin to talk, teach the, the words of life, teach the word of God, teach and share the gospel. Well, what happened next? Verse 22 tells us, well, or 21, the rest of it, on into 22, it tells us now the reaction of the, of the religious crowd, right? We know how the apostles responded. But how did the religious crowd respond when they found out these guys weren't in jail? Well, here's what it says. Let's read on. 21. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, these were the leaders of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. So they had formed a council. These, the high priests, the religious people, the, the, Sadduc- uh, the Sadducees, the, the elders of Israel, the council of Israel, all the main people that had anything to do with Jewish custom or tradition or, or ritual, whatever, they were called together. The high priests, they were out to get these guys. I mean, this was a high court that these guys were forming and they were going to bring them up to these people and they were going to charge them. They were going to either throw them back in prison or they were going to put them to death. They were to that point that they wanted to get rid of these men from preaching Jesus. That's the seriousness of it. And so they brought this council together. They formed this court, this, this group, this body together. And here's what they did. Verse 22. But when the officers come... And found them not in the prison, they returned and told them. So they sent a group of officers down to the prison to get them. They found that they weren't there. They go back, and here's what they said, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety. So they're saying, We went back to the prison. All the doors were shut. There was no sign of anything that had been happened or anything that took place, no foul play. Looked safe to us. And the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within them. And so they said, listen, we go back and everything looks like it's okay. But we went to that cell, that holding cell, that prison cell that these guys were in. And there was not one man in there. So they go back and give this report. And here's what they say. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. So they were doubtful of what was told unto them. But look at verse 25. 
Then one come and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are, are, prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. Could you imagine what the high priest must have thought when he heard that? How in the world did they get out of prison and get down here to the temple? And are they, they're preaching again. They're teaching about Jesus again. And he goes down to 26 and he says, Then went the captain of the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, look at verse 28, saying, Did, we, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? He asked them that question. Now put yourself in that position for a minute. You've been out here preaching, teaching, witnessing, testifying, sharing about the goodness of God. And this has not been the only time that you've been had hands laid on you and maybe you've been beat, maybe you've been persecuted, maybe you've been thrown in jail or thrown in prison, or maybe you've been threatened really good, strongly. You better not be preaching, or you better not be speaking. You better not be doing anything else. No more ministry in the name of Jesus. And then they bring you before the high priest again. He says these words to you, and you see everybody, all the religious leaders. You see all the elders. You see all the leaders in the council of Israel. You see this high court. And they say, did we not tell you not to speak in this name again? How would you respond? How would you respond personally? Well, let's see how these men responded. Here's what they said. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So they've accused them for filling Jerusalem with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And not only that, but you know what I think really got under the religious crowd's skin? Is these apostles preached. This religious crowd, the high priests, the Sadducees, all these rulers, they were the ones that had Jesus crucified and killed. And the blood was on their hands. And here's what he's saying in verse 29. Here's what Peter says. Peter the bold one. He says this. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Man, can we live with that type of faith tonight? Can we live that way? Are we to that place? Are we to that point? If, if we're brought before that highest of high courts and highest council and, and we've been ministering, we've been working, we've been teaching, we've been preaching, we've been sharing the gospel and witnessing to the world and we've been told you better not speak in Jesus' name anymore. You better not and I'll throw you back in jail or I'll throw you back in prison or I'll, I'll stone you to death, I'll put you to death. And then they brought him out. Could we as Peter stand and say like what he he said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Because guys, listen, the reality of it is we don't see it here in America. But we have brothers and sisters in Christ and other countries. They experience this every day. Think about Christians that are living in heavily populated Muslim countries and they're in fear every day they have to hide or have a underground church service or Bible study because they know if they're caught they're going to be killed but these people and you read time and time again and these voice of the martyrs and different ones like that listen these people had the faith in Christ, that they were willing to do what God said above what man said. And I 
hope tonight that you and I, that our faith is there, that, that we are willing to serve God and obey God rather than what man may say. And why should we fear man, right? We should fear God. Because God is able to destroy the body both. He can destroy the body and the soul. But what we find here is he said that we ought to obey God rather than men. And look what verse 30 says. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. What does Peter do? Peter goes back to the gospel. He goes back to telling them truth. He said the God of our fathers. You see, Peter, he grouped the chief priest, the high priest, and he grouped the, the Sanhedrin, he, he grouped the Sadducees, he regrouped the Israelite leaders. He said, hey, the God of our fathers, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. You see, Peter was trying to relate that with those people. And he said, the God of our fathers, he hath raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Peter, once again, kind of very familiar to that message at Pentecost, wasn't he? Where he just preached right down to them. He tells them the truth once again here. Look what he says, verse 31 says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You know what Peter said right there in those words with those other apostles? In this, those two verses. Peter said enough for every one of those people that were gathered there that day that was against them. That was trying to hinder, slow down, and stop the work of God. Peter preached enough in that short little sermon for every one of them to be saved and come to know Christ. The opportunity was given. So what had to happen? They just had to believe, didn't they? They had to believe. They had to call on the name of Jesus. And it said, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Peter closed out this little section by letting them know, hey, we are the witnesses of God. We are the witnesses of the Holy Spirit. We are the witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn back to Acts chapter 1. You got your Bibles. Turn back to Acts chapter 1. What Peter said right there, is what Jesus told them they would be. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says this. This is Jesus talking to them as he spent time with them 40 days after he rose from the dead. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my what? Witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So Peter and them were doing exactly what Jesus said, right? They were being a witness of the Lord Jesus. They were a witness of the Spirit. They were a witness of Him, the Gospel. You know the amazing thing, we're in Acts chapter 5. You know what? The Gospel's still in Jerusalem. The only way the Gospels got out of Jerusalem was just from those people that come to Pentecost and went back to where they were living. But the apostles are still in Jerusalem. And they're still preaching. And they're still going through Jerusalem being a witness of Jesus Christ. You see, they had already filled Jerusalem, as the chief high priest said, of the doctrine of Jesus these men were witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit, aren't you? I'm thankful for the witness of the Holy Spirit. You see, Peter, James, and John, and all these guys, they were preaching, 
They were doing all these great miracles and works and signs and wonders. But you know what the most effective part of that was? Was the witness of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit being there, being present, working in and through them, witnessing. We have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to have the witness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Guys, I encourage you tonight. Just as these men were, they were willing to obey God. They were willing to go all the way. They were to a place where, all right, Lord, your will be done in my life. Your will be done in and through me. Lord, have your way. That's where they were. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We ask, Father, this evening that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. God, we pray you'll continue to work in our lives. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would be with us the remainder of this evening, the remainder of this week. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, God, would work in and through us daily. And that, God, you would help us that wherever we go, whoever we talk to and whoever we come in contact with, that, Lord, they would witness the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ in our lives. And that they would come to the saving knowledge and the understanding of you. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. And all this we ask for it in your name. Amen. Amen. As we stand to our feet this evening, if they want to come and get a song, the altar is open tonight. We encourage you just to mind the Lord as we sing.
he's still calling. And he's still bidding to come. And there's still an invitation uh, for that soul to come and be saved that's lost. And I believe that that invitation will continue to be there until the Lord comes back. And I am so thankful for that opportunity that the Lord Jesus has given us. How many tonight are thankful to be saved? Glad to know the Lord. I, I hope and pray that, that uh, we've enjoyed being in the Lord's house tonight. It has been good to be here. It's been encouraging. Uh, it's always encouraging and strengthening to be able to come and be with brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, anybody tonight have a word or a testimony on your heart you feel led to say this evening before we dismiss? evangelizing and sharing the Lord, I really was remiss. Uh, I've talked about my sister who passed away, who I saw saved, my sister Joyce. She had her seven year anniversary of when she passed. And in our huge family group chat, everyone mentioned everything about Joyce, except the fact that she was saved. Hmm. We, they're not, they're Catholic and they're good Catholics and all that, and, but they don't talk that way. And I really would like to say to the Lord that I'm so sorry that I wasn't strong like the apostles. I wanted to fit in with my family so badly that I didn't talk about Joyce being saved. Who cares if she liked to travel to Italy? Who cares if she liked her dog? She was saved. She went to heaven. And I just would like to, I guess, unburden my heart and say that I can see why people don't always stand up. Because you want to be like everybody else and you don't want to stand out. But uh, I really, it's been since June, it's the beginning of August. And I just would like to say to people that don't worry about it, you're not going to fit in because I know God was very disappointed in me and said, Kathleen, you should have stood up. You should have said, even though everybody go, oh, here she goes again, talking about me. <laughs> and I know that's what they would think. And I, so I went to bed that night just saying, God, I'm so sorry that I let you down, that I did not speak for you who saved me, that I did not speak for you. So I hope that encourages people. If you feel like you just don't want to do it, just let the Holy Spirit just rush through you. think we all have been there. It, it's, it's not a very pleasant mm -hmm. night, is it? <laughs> Appreciate you sharing. We certainly got a lot to pray for, don't we, tonight? We really do. Well, remember uh, service Sunday when you pray, Sunday school at 10, worship will be at 11. Uh, pray for me. I had a pastor friend of mine that asked me to come preach their homecoming service on Sunday, so that's down at Edgemore Baptist, so I'm going to be going down there and uh, pray for Brother Calvin. He'll be here preaching the Lord's Word, and so you'd be much in prayer for him on Sunday morning as he prepares this week and prays that God just give him the message to preach. And remember me and pray for me and my family as we'll be down there on Sunday, so remember us. All right. If nobody else has anything, I'm going to ask Brother Billy, would you dismiss us tonight in prayer?